So that's kind of uh, so I you know uh, that's kind of my perspective that I bring here: software, BCI, neuroadaptivity, um, and so what is neurotechnology? Since it's you know it's a neurotechnology conference. Well, um, there's obviously the there's obviously the you know the invasive stuff. Uh, there's Neuralink and uh, all sorts of other companies. There's deep brain stimulation, and that's one form of neurotechnology for sure. There are kind of com- consumer devices, research grade devices here in the middle, EEGs, FNIRs, um, different kinds of devices, and that's obviously neurotechnology is measuring neural signals. But I would argue that in a very real sense, Apple Watch and different kinds of other wearables, I'm not endorsing a product here, different kinds of wearables and smartwatches even are sort of neurotechnology. Uh, for example, you can measure heart rate variability with a lot of smartwatches. Heart rate variability is an excellent measure. You can derive excellent measures from HRV of sort of the, the relative balance of the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic uh, nervous system. So roughly speaking, your arousal or stress state, um, you can build, you can actually use HRV towards emotion prediction. So, uh, you know, effective states, broadly speaking, it's it's a very useful measure. That's not a neural signal uh, directly, but is it a neurotechnology? Is speech emotion recognition in neurotechnology where you take uh, speech from a person generated by the brain, but it's not a neural signal. You run it through, let's say a deep learning uh, neural net predict emotions, arousal, valence, something like that. 